What's going on everybody, I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my guide for Atelier Sophie 2. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the ultimate weapon for Plakta, including which weapon, why we choose that and the traits needed for it. So without further ado, let's jump in shall we? Now there are a few things you are going to need before we start and some of these things aren't going to be until very late in the game. First of all, you are going to need an Okagrum Ingus. I know I've butchered the pronunciation, I'm sorry, I'm not German. Anyway, you want to get as much quality on this as possible. Ideally, max it out, because we are going to be using a few of these. Also, try and get as many of the alchemic components, so the elements just below the quality. Try get them as high up as you can as well, but they aren't really necessary. As you can see, you know, my, my purple, well, my light element isn't actually maxed. That's fine. It's still more than good enough for this process. Uh, also, just make sure you max out the effect. You do want gear synth plus 14 to all, and you want gear synth plus 10 to attack and speed. Now, when it comes to traits, this is also the easiest material to get the traits on that you want. Like some of the others, yeah, they can be... Um, well, some of the other items can be used as well. But I personally just find the uh, the ingot to be the easiest, especially for weapons, because, you know, you get to use it in them all. So, other than that, you are going to need a Philosopher's Stone. However, this Philosopher's Stone is going to be a little bit different. Now, you do want as much quality that you can get on it. But when it comes to the actual effects, like, it doesn't matter what you get for lightning, ice, or light. I mean, you can actually ignore ice if you want. Just try and get to the gear synth all on the fire element, and then don't go any higher. Because if you go higher, you're going to lose that extra 10 stats in the gear, which means we're going to lose a total of 30 stats. Like, 30 stats across the board on this weapon just from using Philosopher's Stones. So make sure you get uh, make sure you get that and duplicate it a few times as well. Again, you know, try and try and get the other alchemic components, but they aren't necessarily needed for this. Now, a few of the things you might actually be wondering is why do we use these traits? Well, the main reason for that is some of the other traits which you might have seen are bugged, and when I say bugged, I mean royally, royally screwed. So if we take a look at these three right here, Scholar King, you know, that is supposed to increase the everybody's attack, defense, and speed per person that has this trait in the party. It's supposed to increase it by 50. It doesn't. It only increases attack, defense, and speed by 20 per person with this trait, which unfortunately means uh, with three people with that, you're only going to gain 60 stats across the board, and that's only for attack, defense, and speed. So that right there is why we go all stat power, because that gives us all stats plus 40. Yes, we lose 20, you know, attack, defense, and speed, but especially with Plokta, we make up for it by gaining, you know, extra HP and extra MP. And for Plakta, MP is by far the most important stat ever. Uh, now, after all, we do have Scholar King skill. When the user is in the attack team, increase the whole attack team's attack by 50, and item and skill damage by 10%. Now, this is also bugged. It does not increase your attack by 50, it increases it by 30 instead. So, again, you know, just for the attack increase, not that handy. I'm also unsure right now if the item and skill damage is bugged. I can't really notice a very big difference when using this. However, that could just be me being blind. If you notice a difference, then feel free to replace skillful attack with the Scholar King skill trait for your alchemists just to increase the item damage. Right now though, I'm unsure if that works, so I'm going to be not using that for this guide. I will, however, pin a comment after further testing to let you guys know. And then the last one is Tarrant King skill, which again is broke. It does not increase your attack by 100, it increases it by 50. And the aura reduce by an extra 3 is only on the very final hit. So it's not 3 per hit, it's 3 per, you know, actual attack button usage. Not really worthwhile, unfortunately. 
So again, we're just going with all stat power, persistent attack, and skillful attack. But that's up to you. Feel free to change uh, Scholar King skill in for skillful attack if you want. If you are making a weapon for a fighter character, keep skillful attack because you're not really going to need the item damage at all. Right. With that said, let's actually jump in to crafting the weapon, shall we? So, of course, with it being a, a weapon for Plakta, we do need to use Plakta to synthesize it. It is going to be the Divine Punisher. I suggest using the Ground Layer Catalyst, just because of the simple fact that it makes reaching those higher levels on the effects much, much easier. Now, when it comes to the first ingot, again, you know, just choose the one you want. Uh, Book of Hades, try to get that as high quality as possible, but it doesn't really necessarily matter, to be honest. Second ingot, you know, again, just make sure you actually use the um, the item with max quality and max effects. You don't need traits on this ingot, so feel free to use a different one if you want. Now, as for the actual elixirs, this is where you're going to be using two Philosopher's Stones for the extra 10 stats. And then it's just a case of uh, slowly going through them. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to jump cut to uh, once the board is finished placed, and then we will continue on from there. Okay, so all the items are now placed, and if we go over, you know, just why we've done this in this particular order, I think you'll all understand. So, we've already talked about why we're using the Ochagrums and the Philosopher's Stones, simply due to all the extra stats we can gain from them. Now, in terms of the actual alchemic placement, we start off with the Lightning Element, and the reason for that is, obviously it's needed for the Judgment XXL skill, but once we actually get 10 links, we can then go ahead and add another Okagrim ingot for an extra, you know, 14 stats across the board. From there, once we actually get that Okagrim in, we don't actually need as many links for lightning, so we can slowly start overwriting a few of them. However, once we've got the uh, the Okagrim in, we're going to start working on the light element. And yes, there is no point whatsoever in doing light elements for this weapon, because there's no effect for it. What we actually use it for is really, really simple. Once we get a link of 10 with the light element, we can add another mysterious ingredient, well, magical in this case, and that means we can add another Philosopher's Stone, which ends up giving us an extra 10 stat points across the board. So, still very worthwhile. Now, once we've got all the light elements in, you can overwrite them entirely. That, that does not matter whatsoever. Feel free to absolutely get rid of them. After that, we're going to focus on pretty much the only other worthwhile element, and that's going to be water. Now, the reason we go for water last is, honestly, it's kind of easy to max out. Not only that, once we get a 10 link water, that only allows us to add a water item. And so, we don't really gain any extra stats from that, and that's why it's last. Just be careful that you don't go over the lightning element, because we still want to keep the Judgment XXL. If you want, you can use the, um, the water slot to get a couple of points into fire, but honestly, I really don't see the need or the purpose for that, so I just leave it. Right, let's go ahead and synth, and we can take a look at the finished weapon, shall we? So, of course, I've already gone over the traits. We are using all stat power, skillful attack, and persistent attack. It is just a real big shame that, you know, some of the uh, the traits I mentioned at the start of the video simply don't work. Well, they work, just not as well as they should do. So, let's go ahead and finish the synthesis off right now. And there we go. We have a max quality Divine Punisher for Plakta. It increases her attacks by three. She gets a 15% item boost. She has the Judgment XXL, which is the, uh, the max version. The stats on the weapon are as high as they can possibly go. And we also have uh, an extra 70% damage when attacking with her. So she is now literally a monster. And that is going to be it for how to create Plokta's ultimate weapon, guys. Still, though, I hope you have enjoyed the video, and I hope it's helped. If it has, please be sure to hit that like button and leave a comment down below. And, of course, 
If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more Atelier Guides. As always though everybody, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.